there, there are a lot of giants in this book. Yes. There are a lot of locations, but there are a lot of magic items yes. as well and treasure. Oh, yes. yes. Tell oh. me about some of these magic items that we can uh, find in the book. These are some of my favorite magic items I have ever made. They're so much fun. Uh, we've got a variety of magic items in this book, uh, including three artifacts uh, and one magic item for every single giant rune that appears in the book. With the rune items, we have all of these items are magic items that have been imbued with power, but also have uh, one of the giant runes inscribed on them. Uh, and so the person who has the item uh, has the ability to do what is called invoking the rune, which gives it an extra burst of power or an extra effect. Uh, the magic items range from things from spellcasters to things from fighters, uh, even uh, some like things like light armor sets that are magical now, which are sometimes hard to come by. On top of this, we have loot. We have giant loot. Giant loot, plenty of loot, uh, ranging from what you might find in a giant's bag. We had to do those tables. Yeah. But those tables also include the possibility of the bag jelly, which is a monster in the bestiary. We didn't mention what happens when food left in a giant bag too long comes to life. Something horrifying. <laughs> yes. So what you might find in a giant bag, but then also we discuss uh, the kinds of, what happens if you're finding treasure in the ruins from an ancient giant, giant empire. How big are the coins? <laughs> How much are they worth? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's a, that's a, I can either eat my dinner off of this plate, or it's, I can it's cast It's technically it just one gold piece. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and there's also like a blunderbuss or a pistol. Yeah, there's of... there, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are a couple of uh, firearms. So one of them is what I'm calling the Sunlight Gatling Gun. <laughs> called the Lucent Destroyer, which is a three-barreled musket that fires beams of sunlight. Uh, it is inscribed with the light rune, and you can cast, uh, you can invoke it to cast the sunbeam spell. It's fantastic. The second one is uh, the punnily named Thunderbus, which is a blunderbuss with the thunder rune, or the storm rune inscribed on it. Uh, it is a magical pistol that, instead of requiring ammunition, fires bursts of thunder energy, uh, and it has a rune that you can invoke on it as well. That's awesome. It's so much fun. Uh, what, what are some of the other ones? We've got we've got X. Yes. We've got yes. So we have in this book three artifacts: uh, one for Anam, one for Bigby, and one for Dean Castra. Anam's artifact is the Ads of Anam, which kind of leans into his role as a, a shaper and a creator. Mm. Uh, in the mythos, he's the one who pulled the elemental planes out of the elemental chaos. So we wanted to lean into that with uh, the ads being his uh, a symbol of, of wood carving and craftsmanship and, and making. It also looks very much like an axe and is, is sharp enough to function as one, which works really well when you're in a game that has some real fun magic weapons. So <laughs> it's a big giant ads that functions as a great axe, which is just fun. And it has a bunch of other uh, cool properties. Uh, allowing you to cast a couple spells. What is Big B's magical item? <laughs> Big B's magic item is the aptly named Big B's Beneficent Bracelet. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it is this beautiful bracelet that has little rings attached to it by chains. Uh, and it really leans into Big B's kind of iconic hand and other force sculpture kind of kinds of spells both from this edition and previous ones it gives you the ability to create structures out of force uh and it it leans really hard into that um that sort of force sculpture magic that big b is very well known for there's some gauntlets that are a bit unusual in this as well correct in some realms in some some areas of the multiverse there is a long-standing war between the giants and the dragons um, and notably, dragons can fly, and giants, some of them can, most of them can't. So yeah. when we were working on the magic items, I was thinking, what would be a magic item that giants would have, or giants would create, if they were fighting airborne creatures like dragons? So I made a magic item that is a pair of gauntlets that will allow you to punch dragons. <laughs> it allows you to punch other things, too. Yeah. But it, mostly, it, it's for punching dragons. <laughs> Fantastic. Which is just fun, uh, as as part of the, they are inscribed with the dragon rune, so you can invoke the runes on these gauntlets, and it extends your reach massively as you get these like spectral fists that go up to thirty feet away, and you can just swing those from the ground and hit your airborne creatures while not having to get in a range or get a fly speed, which is super fun. Also, they're they're called the Worm Reaver gauntlets, which is just a super cool name. <laughs> it's a very metal yep. name, yeah. Yeah. The, the default rule in D&D is that any magic item that's made to be worn resizes to fit its wearer. Right. But the DM has leeway to play around with that, and, and we explore what playing around with that might look like. So 
maybe um, items made by giants don't resize at all, and you find a giant ring, and you've got to wear it as a circlet. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, as long as the DM is is like, yes, this works, that's great. Or maybe um, if you've built your campaign around exploring the remnants of ancient giant empires. Maybe that's a, a big thing in the world. Maybe everything in the world's past is giant related. And so the, the artificers and smiths of this world have learned techniques for modifying these items to, to work better. But, but that's like an extra stage. Once you've recovered the treasure, you gotta take it back to the artificer to, to get it resized or I adjusted see, I can you. see an entire economy, like if there's a world that is only giants and like humanoids are just <clears throat> mostly tiny and, and that's the default, you know, the economy of like stealing giant items and then like repurposing them. Like you're the We're little. We're the borrowers. Yeah, yeah exactly, you're the little. <laughs> So We're the, the vermin. In the, in yeah, the you are walls. the vermin, and you're trying to repurpose. You are the rats of this world. That's 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 a lot of fun as well. It is a lot of fun. What's your favorite thing about uh, designing some of these magical <sighs> items for the book? So magic items are some of my favorite things to create because it is the it is the perfect meld of thinking about like usefulness. Uh, plus also just satisfying my inner giddy player. Um, I'm I'm someone who grew up, I loved dinosaurs. I, I still love dinosaurs. Um, and when I found out there were like figurines of wondrous power, I always wanted some that could summon dinosaurs. So this book let me make them, It's which is super cool. I got to make like some really awesome light armor sets because of someone who likes playing rogues and, and rangers uh, and, and other like dexterity based characters. I always wish there were more magical light armor sets. Um, so I got to make some of those. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, there are magical firearms, which are something that I personally just find so tasty. <laughs> it is so much fun for me to make these items because I enjoy them, but I also can see how so many other people in their games all across the world will also enjoy them. And knowing that these items are going to be used and enjoyed and bring chaos to games everywhere, even beyond what I can imagine, is just so fulfilling and heartwarming and just makes me so excited. And I can't wait to hear how people use these items or encounter them in their games.